Hello, welcome, welcome, welcome back. Come in, sit down, sit down, shut the door, make yourself comfortable. There we go. Right. Today, English podcast with Paul. Yes, you're on the right channel. Okay. Today, we're looking at British popular idioms. Idioms. Now, if you don't know what an idiom is, then where have you been? Where have you been? We all speak in English in idioms all the time. And England and English is no different that we use lots and lots and lots of idioms. It's, it's part of natural conversation, natural speech. It makes it a little bit more interesting for our imaginations and our brains to visualize something maybe a bit funny, a bit quirky or, or something that has roots and ancestry to, to something of a bygone era. So, yes, sit down, get comfortable, turn up that dial, put on your headphones and let's jump straight into it. British idioms. Oh, but I must say for a moment, if, if you hear any drilling or any background noises, I apologise. There's some work going on just across the road from me. So my apologies in advance. OK, right. Let's dive in. Let's dive in. Let's have a look at what we got here. OK, bear with me just one moment while I clip over to that one over there. Right. What have we got? In British idioms. All right. So the number number one, the first one is a piece of cake. Oh, that is such a piece of cake. That is so easy. I don't know why we use the term cake for something that's very, very easy, but it is what we do at the moment. It's what we say. Piece of cake. So, so simple, so easy, effortless. Piece of cake. I could do it with my eyes shut. You don't really mean you could do it with your eyes shut, but you know, you're exaggerating a little bit. Hyperbole. That's another interesting subject. Hyperbole. Extreme exaggeration. Like, oh, I could eat a horse. I'm so hungry. You're not really going to eat a horse, are you? But, but hyperbole means, you know, extreme exaggeration. I could eat a horse. Right, let's stay on topic. Stay stay focused. All right, here we go. A break, break a leg. It's more, more when somebody's doing maybe some theatre work or they're doing some acting. You know, they say, oh, yeah, break a leg. We don't say that much. All right, bite the bullet. Oh, to face a difficult situation. Yes, to bite the bullet. Bite the bullet. Hmm. That's often when something's difficult and we go, oh, I've got to bite the bullet and, and speak to the manager or speak to my boss. Bite the bullet. All right, okay. Cat's out of the bag. <laughs> now, that's that's a bit more visual. There's a little bit more fun and engaging. Like, oh, the cat's out of the bag. Meow, meow. And you can imagine this this cat running around or something, but uh, no, it just means that uh, maybe a secret or something that was was not public knowledge is now out there. Maybe, for example, uh, a friend is is um, pregnant, and they were going to keep it under wraps. All right, what else we got? Cost an arm and a leg. You know, you'll hear that a lot in England, uh, in the UK anyway. Oh, I was going to buy it, but it cost an arm and a leg, so. It's going to have to wait, you know, or, or maybe you said, oh, yeah, look at this new phone I got. Cost me an arm and a leg. Yeah, we say that a lot. Because because we're often complaining about how expensive things are. Let me know what you say when something's really expensive. Let me know. What do you say? Is is it is there some really good um, acronym or, or a really good um metaphor for something that's really really expensive do you just like fall down onto your knees and cry into your into your hands <laughs> let me know in the comments all right donkey's ears yeah yeah we do say that quite often donkey's ears this is a list this is not this is not my list this is a list i've got from chat gpt in the internet just to see how how Closely it is to, to and resembles to what I as an English speaker would say in England. So this is pretty close. We would we say a lot of these things. Hence why I'm using this term. We say a lot of this or we say this a lot. All right. So 
Like I said, this is not out of the book. This is off the internet. Donkey's ears. So I guess I guess a bit like a dog. A dog has um, like, I don't know, 10 years, we say, are oh, like dog's lives. So donkey's years would mean like, oh, 10 years plus, maybe 15, 20 years. God, I haven't seen him in donkey's years. He was my neighbor in that house that I used to live at. I haven't seen him in donkey's years. Wow. Often quite with surprise. Okay, okay. Easy peasy. That's more of a childish thing to say. You would say, oh, I, I did my maths quiz. It was easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. Again, like I said, it's a little bit of a childish thing you would say. Not, not many adults would say that. All right. Face the music. That's very much like bite the bullet. Um, I think face the music is is uh, a little bit more to standing up and, and accepting something that's going to happen to you. Whereas bite the bullet is something you think, right, okay, let's have a stiff upper lift. Let's just go in and do it. You know, like roll your sleeves up and bite the bullet and start cleaning out that car. Clean out your car. I'm going to bite the bullet and just do it. Whereas face the music normally means that somebody's going to be upset with you and angry with you and you got to just go and put up with it. All right. Face the music. A fish out of water. Now, that's not so popular. Feeling a place or uh, out of place or uncomfortable. Yeah. When I went to that royal wedding, I felt like a fish out of water. It was not comfortable for me. Not the sort of thing I want to be in around aristocracy uh, and the feeling of all that money. I felt like a fish out of water. All right. Having a chin wag. OK, so this one's a bit older. Uh, we don't hear this quite so often. But more so, more so in the 80s and 90s, a chin wag, a good old chin wag, would would imply that two two people were just chatting away about not a lot, not a lot of importance, maybe over the fence to your neighbour or putting off doing something. So you're going to have a chin wag with a work colleague, and um, yeah, you just maybe a bit of gossip or just a little bit of. Um, catching up with of nothing that significance of importance. All right, good old chinwag. Oh, that's a bit. In the doghouse. Yeah. Now, this is often termed for men that have done something wrong at home, and the woman would say that they're in the doghouse, or he's, oh, I'm in the doghouse at home. I forgot my wife's birthday. Something like that. In the doghouse. All right. It's raining cats and dogs, just heavy rainfall. Now, this is one of these that hark back to olden times where I think I think a long time ago, many, many homes were built into the the um, the hillside and the hillside uh, for added protection um, and for for warmth, building a, uh, a home into a hillside would really help a lot in, in that respect. But also um, keeping you sheltered from the rain. If it's already part of the hill, then often it, it wouldn't come into the building, hence why that was a good idea. Anyway, so a lot of the animals would stay close, obviously for a warmth or food or protection. And so a lot of the animals would, would be on, on the roof, uh, as you would say, but but also kind of like the, the higher up on the hill. And so when it rained, um, and, and rained heavily so it would sort of push them off off the roof so to speak and if you were looking outside when the cat or the dog came down from the roof you would say it's raining cats and dogs as a bit of a joke I guess but we say it a lot oh it's raining cats and dogs or as this is more of an adult show we would often say it's precipitating persistently precipitating persistently is a very polite way of saying it's pissing down out there. Oh my God, it's pissing down. I'm not going out. It's raining. It's raining cats and dogs. Oh, it's awful. Oh, pissing down. Again, that's not the sort of thing you'd say in front of your children because it's implying urination when you go for a piss. Um, the same as the weather is pissing down, it's coming down heavy. Again, not to be used around children. Okay, keep a stiff upper lip. 
so that's very much a, an old English saying, you know, like be a good, strong soldier, be a good, strong fellow, you know, keep a stiff upper lip. Kind of like talk you would hear in the military. Roar, stiff upper lip. Oh, I can uh, um, keep going and, and hold on in my emotions and my feelings. All right. So they say here, brave, remain brave and composed in difficult situations. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, composed. Take a breath, stiff upper lip. Yes, and soldier on, soldier on, keep going. Okay. Um, like chalk and cheese. <laughs> nah, I like this one, it's very visual. Chalk and cheese. I used to have trouble saying that when I was younger. So two opposites, very, very opposite to each other. Ah, oh, they're like chalk and cheese. They get on like cat and dog, you know, fighting and, and uh, not good at all. Chalk and cheese, two opposites that you wouldn't want to put together. Okay, mind your P's and Q's. Now, that's very, very old. I, I heard that in school many, many, many years ago. Well, not that many years ago. P's and Q's, um, be on your best behavior. So it's polite, P's and Q's. I don't know what the Q is actually. Polite and don't question, I guess. All right, next one. On the ball, on the ball, alert and competent. On the ball. He was really on the ball with that, that marketing strategy. He really hit it out of the park. It was really, really good. He was clever. He was keeping his eye on the ball. He knows what's going on. He's uh, got his finger on the pulse. All right, so very good being being very positive, proactive, and, and um, reacting to the, to the situation. Okay, piece of action. Uh, that's more of an Americanism, really. I want a piece of the action. That might be a young soldier wanting to get into battle, you know, or maybe somebody that wants to um, uh, be in the police force and they want they want some confrontation and excitement and adrenaline. Maybe some some. I don't know. Yeah, adrenaline probably. A piece of the action. Okay. Saved by the bell. Rescued by an unpleasant situation at the last moment. Yeah, so if you're about to uh, have an argument with somebody and then their phone rings and go, oh, you're saved by the bell. Maybe your boss wants to, to have a moan at you and then, yeah, the phone rings or the fire alarm goes off and you'd be saved by the bell, saved by the bell. <laughs> that was also a TV show in the late 90s, Saved by the Bell. Okay, spill the beans. And like it says there, to reveal a secret. You know, you might get um, confronted by somebody and they might be interrogating you like, like in the CIA. Now, come on, spill the beans. Tell me the truth. What happened? So revealing the secret. Ah, okay. The ball is in your court. The ball is in your court. Now, I think this is like squash. So it refers to a game of squash where... Um, you, you, you play in a court and you, you bat the ball around and, and each other has to hit it. I guess it comes from something like that. And it just means it is now up to you to make the decision. It's for you to make the move and, and to um, do the next thing. The ball is now in your court. Now, you could hit that like and subscribe button. The ball is in your court. See what I did there? Okay, um, pot all call, the pot calling the kettle black. Now, this, this is very similar to sarcasm when somebody says something to you and, and you think, hang on a minute, why, why are you saying that about me? What about you? So it could be a case that maybe somebody says, oh, you need to go out and exercise more. You know, you're getting a little bit, you know, big around the belly. And you look at them and go, Kettle calling the pot black, meaning that they're even bigger or they're just as um, unfit themselves. Kettle calling the pot black, like, oh my goodness, I can't believe you said that when, when you're doing something worse. All right, that's a good one. That's a good one. We use that quite often. Okay. Um, turning a blind eye. Turning a blind eye. So looking away when something shouldn't be happening. 
when something uh, is done that you uh, that you would report or that you're um, not happy about, you turn a blind eye. Pretend you didn't see it. Pretend you didn't see it. Okay. Under the weather. Oh, I'm under the weather today. <laughs> My throat is hoarse. I'm not feeling it. Oh. So again, feeling hoarse or under the weather, meaning that you're um, not very well. Maybe a sore throat, maybe a bit of a cold. All right, next one. Up in the air. Oh my goodness, everything is up in the air. I spoke to the solicitors. I spoke to the mortgage company. Nobody knows what's happening. Oh, it's all up in the air. Up in the air. Oh my goodness. Nobody knows what's going on. Okay. Um, waste of space. Now, this is very negative. We would say this about somebody, maybe under our breath, or, or if you're very angry with them to their face. You're a waste of space. Or that item, that thing is a waste of space. You went out and you spent this much money on that thing. Oh, it's a waste of space. <laughs> also, you could say it's, it's as good as a chocolate fire guard. It's about as useful as a chocolate fire guard. Now, we all know a chocolate thing would melt if it was a fire guard. So guarding... And now that fire guard is, is something you put around the fire to stop children getting too close uh, or stop anybody falling in it and things like that. So if it's made of chocolate, it's going to melt. You can visualize it now. You know, there's this runny chocolate everywhere. But uh, yeah, it's, it's obviously pointless and useless. Like, I don't know, spitting in the rain. It, it's one of those things that's just pointless. There's no, no reason to it. Talking of chocolate, I got a hot chocolate ear. Ear? Sound very West Country. Ear by gum, I've got a hot chocolate, I have. I can't read and I can't write, but I can drive a tractor. Hooray! <laughs> that reminds me of our very famous um, music uh, musicians in, in this area. There's very famous. Quite old now. What are they called? What are they called? Um, let me have a sip of my chocolate and I'll tell you. A little bit sweet. The Wurzels. You have a look at them on the internet, on YouTube. The Wurzels. Really funny West Country old folk singers. They've been around for a long time. They, they're they actually that popular. They, they've they been on Glastonbury Festival. You know, and they, do, they go around a lot of festivals, especially the famous Glastonbury Festival, which is the biggest greenfield festival in Europe. People come from all over the world to go to Glastonbury Festival. It is super big. It is absolutely gigantic. I digress. The Wurzels, really funny. It, you should uh, have a listen to them. So, yeah, that was my, my West Country accent creeping out there. <laughs> West Country accent. Right, okay, where are we? Waste of space. When pigs fly, when pigs fly. Now, this means that it's never going to happen, all right? I'm going to give you a pay rise. When pigs fly, Ugh. like, no, that's not going to happen. <laughs> um, you can't have your cake and eat it. Now they put and eat it too, but it's just you can't have your cake and eat it. That means you, you, you can't be married to a beautiful, amazing woman and go out dating and clubbing with lots of other beautiful women um, and, and do both. It, it's one or the other. You can't have both. You can't have your cake and eat it. All right, what else we got? Um, your guess is as good as mine. Your guess is as good as mine. That means I've got no blimming clue. All right. What's the weather tomorrow? I don't know. What's the weather tomorrow? Your guess is as good as mine. I've got no idea. Okay. All mouth and no trousers. <laughs> now, this is normally about somebody that's given it a lot of yap, 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 yap. Um, maybe a lot of attitude, and they're like, oh, but, 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 but I could do this, I could do that, I'm going to do this. And you think to yourself, oh, no, that person is all mouth and no trousers. It means they do lots and lots of talking, but they don't actually do any action. So they might be aggressive towards you, or they might be 
telling you their vision of the future, what they're going to do. Oh, yeah, I'm going to buy a Ferrari. I'm going to buy a big palace. I'm going to be the best person. And you're like, ugh, yeah. You're all mouth and no trousers. You never actually do anything. So there's a lot of people like that that I meet. Okay, what else we got? Um, don't cry over spilt milk. Again, this is quite old, and I think it relates to actually spilling milk, and it used to be expensive, and, and you'd get in trouble for it. But don't cry over spilt milk. It's kind of really stuck through the ages, and uh, so it means just just uh, not worry about that that problem or that accident or that issue, and, and just move on. You know, it, it's not worth getting too upset about. Like like if you um, bump your car on, on a wall or something and it's only a minor and you think, ah, oh, don't get too upset about it. It's okay, you know, don't cry over spilt milk. Oh, okay. I'll let you have a quick look at what I've got here as well. See what you think. Let's have a look. There we go. Now you can see me on a different camera. And we're looking at the same list. Okay. Bees knees. I haven't heard that for a long time. I haven't. Oh, it's the bee's knees. Nowadays, if um, more, more modern sound, sound, more modern idiom, um, again, not for the children, not for, more for slang. You would hear somebody might say, it's the dog's bollocks. Yes, the dog's bollocks. Meaning it's really, really good. The bee's knees is something your grandmother might say. Oh, it's the bee's knees. Meaning is very posh or very, very good. But yeah, the other term is more slang. Um, you could just say, um, oh yeah, it's got all the bells and whistles. My new my new electric car, wow. It's got all the bells and whistles, all the features and, the, and, and interesting, exciting things you'd want. It's the bee's knees. It's really good. Okay, next one. Bob's your uncle. <laughs> okay. Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt. So it means it means everything is sorted um, and it's like easy. But it's normally talking about the future. So you would say, okay, what we'll do, right? We'll rob the bank. What we'll do, we'll go in and we'll do this and we'll do that and we'll do that. And then we'll come out and Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt. There we go, done. It's that easy. All right, so it's normally talking about something about the future and how easy it is that you're going to be able to do this. Bob's your uncle, super simple. Okay, this next one is carry coals to Newcastle. Now, I don't know if anybody out there has uh, been to Newcastle. Uh, it's definitely an interesting and exciting place. But that's not a phrase I've ever heard. That's what we call a colloquialism. Colloquialism. A local slang or local phrase. Carry coals to Newcastle. Okay, it says it means do something unnecessarily, unnecessarily. Carry coals to Newcastle. There are a few other um, colloquialisms and, and uh, terms that I haven't heard. Oh, sorry. Well, there's obviously lots I haven't heard because, you know, it's a big old world. But there are a few others that uh, I'd like to share with you that you might not have heard. Now, that's not on this list. Um so what would that be? That'd be like um, going to Coventry. Uh, no, sorry, my mistake. Not going to Coventry. Sent to Coventry. Now, obviously, that's got a place name in it, uh, and being sent there, uh, that that means that people are ignoring you and and um, ostracizing you, pushing you out of the circle sent to Coventry. You've done something bad, so we've sent you to Coventry. Now, I guess that's colloquial to, to where I live in, in the south of the country. Colloquialisms. Sent to Coventry. Okay, what we got next? And I'm confused about Fit as a fiddle. So I've got a medical uh, on Wednesday, tomorrow. Now, hopefully, I feel fit as a fiddle. Hopefully, the doctor will say the same. You're as fit as a fiddle. Or we might say, fit as a butcher's dog. Fit as a butcher's dog. <laughs> that means that the, the dog would be getting good bones and meat direct from the butcher when he comes home. Fit as a fiddle. Uh, a fiddle is quite thin and narrow. 
So I'm assuming, now this is just, um, even the word assume is an interesting term. We often say, don't assume anything because it makes an ass out of you and me. So obviously the word spell assume, A double S U M E, makes an ass out of you and me if you assume. Okay, so fit as a fiddle. Now often young men would look over and they'd say, ooh, that girl, she is fit, fit. Not just meaning that she's um, athletic or, or svelte in, in, her, in her physique, but maybe like in, in her looks, she's fit, she's good looking, she's sexy. Fit as a fiddle or fit as, and then you might say a four letter word afterwards. F-U-C-K. All right, moving on, moving on. Um, give someone the cold shoulder. Well, yeah, ignoring or showing disapproval. Giving somebody the sho cold shoulder is, is, again, the same as sending somebody to Coventry. Cold shoulder meaning that you're cold towards them. You're not giving them a lot of uh, interaction or support. You're giving them the, um, a cold look, a cold feeling, like, like you don't like them. Uh, and the shoulder would imply that, you know, you look over your shoulder at them and ugh, give them a cold shoulder. And talking about shoulders, uh, again, not on this list, is, um, oh, he's got a chip on his shoulder. A chip on their shoulder. So that would imply that they're disgruntled and unhappy about something. You know, um, my, my neighbor, he doesn't like his workplace. He's got a chip on his shoulder because they had a falling out about pay rises. He's got a chip on his shoulder, uh, a grudge. He's not happy with that company or with that person. Okay. Hold your horses. Whoa, 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 whoa. Calm down, calm down. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, we're not going to do that. Hold your horses. Hold your horses. Hang on. Let me have a look at the numbers. So hold your horses means that somebody is very excited and energetic and moving forward faster than other people want or faster than you want. Maybe you're with um, uh, a partner and you're getting a bit frisky. And they go, whoa, 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 hold your horses. You know, they're, they we're out in public. You know, I don't like it. You know, maybe wait until we get home. Or it could be a case of, um, right, let's come on. Let's do this marketing campaign. Let's get out there. Let's pay for the money. Let's do it. And then somebody else says, whoa, 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 hold your horses. We need to finish the proof of concept first. We need to get approval. We need this. We need that. All right, so hold your horses. Slow down. Hang on. Let's, let's evaluate. Okay, <laughs> now they've got jacket potato. Jacket potato is a baked potato, but it's just a common phrase. You know, I'm going to get a jacket potato and beans and maybe a bit of cheese for, for my dinner. So I don't know why it's considered an idiom. It's just a baked potato, jacket potato. Hmm. Sometimes might even call it a jacket spud. I'm going to get a jacket spud. Now, obviously, depending on where you are in the world, what country you're in, in the UK, often if people come out of a nightclub, when, when you're younger, you know, in your 20s and 30s, you come out of a nightclub and maybe you've had a few drinks, you get hungry. And so you might go looking for a takeaway. Now, often they're, where the nightclubs are, are normally away from a lot of residential people, often it'll be a bit further out on the edge of town. Often there would be um, snack wagons, you know, maybe like um, a, a place that sells burgers and, and kebabs and things like this. And more frequently, you get somewhere where there's a jacket potato wagon. What do we call it? Like a um, spud you like is, a, I think, a franchise name for uh, a guy that sells jacket potatoes out of a moving truck, like a, a van or, or, or out the back of a trailer, something like that. And um, he, he would already have pre-cooked and preheated jacket potatoes. Often, revelers may like uh, jacket potato with curry in it or, or chili con carne. That was a favourite. Cheese and chili con carne. So that was uh, that was a big favourite. A lot of uh, revelers that come out from a, a nightclub a little bit tipsy and a bit hungry. So spud you like jacket potato. 
very very popular okay moving on right um knock on wood so we wouldn't say knock on wood i think that's more of an americanism but we would say touch wood now if you haven't got any wood around you you could often touch your forehead touch wood i mentioned this the other day in another podcast um so touch wood is for for good luck if somebody says something that's a little bit um, in the future or a bit precarious <gasps> I really hope I get that job if everything goes all right touch wood I'll get that job that I applied for touch wood everything's gonna be all right when my car goes into the mechanic touch wood it'll be okay all right so if you don't have wood around you you would touch your forehead because you're implying your head is made of wood I don't know it's a crazy silly idea but there we go touch wood knock on wood lose the plot excuse me lose the plot now this is often talked about where somebody is quite angry and crazy so maybe you've just been fired from work and you don't like them and you don't want a reference and you're like, ah, I hate you ah. and you go mad you just yell and shout and bang and do lots of uh, unprofessional behavior. They lost the plot. Now, often teenagers would say, um, uh, oh, mum, I want to stay out later. But oh, when I said I wanted to go to a party, my mum lost the plot. Lose control, just go rah. Now, I don't know whether the, the I think the plot would, would Im imply like a story and and the plot of the story or a narrative um and then or, or like a character and they would just lose character i guess that where it come from lose the plot the plot is this 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 and this and now mum's lost it mum's lost the plot she's she's gone ballistic she's out of this world she's gone do lally she's she's gonna go crazy she's gonna ah oh, she's gonna rip my head off she's so angry all right lose the plot make a mountain out of a molehill that's kind of the opposite mountain out of a molehill like oh i i uh, went to the cupboard and i pulled out a cup and then i knocked over a glass it fell out and um i knocked over a glass and broke it i cleaned it up and and uh, got rid of it properly but God, my dad really wants to make a mountain out of a molehill just because he liked the glass you know is his favorite beer glass God, making a right mountain out of a molehill so obviously a molehill is a mound of earth that's come out maybe in a field or a park, something like that, or your garden. Uh, and it's normally not very high. But obviously making that into a mountain, a mountain obviously is massive. So making that, that situation from something that could be just small to something very, very big. And then it's very difficult to, to, for that person to keep context of, of everything Making a mountain out of a molehill. It was only a glass, for goodness sake. Calm down. Mountain out of a molehill. All right. Not my cup of tea. Well, not today. I've got hot chocolate today. Not my cup of tea. Well, now we use this quite a lot. This is to imply that something that somebody enjoys, whether it's a hobby or, or a work profession or a, or a mode of transport, is not the one that you would choose. It's not one that... Um, resonates with you not something that you enjoy not something you like now you might say oh i really love motorbikes motorbikes are my life it's in my blood it's in my dna it's in my genes i love motorcycles that adrenaline and energy and excitement it's just so passionate and it's amazing i love motorbikes and then somebody else might say mm, it's not my cup of tea no i don't really like motorbikes no I prefer, I prefer a nice, big, safe car. You know, I'm safe in a car. I'm not going to get hurt and, and, and have a, a traffic accident and die like on a motorbike. So it's not my cup of tea. And you can use that with any subject, really. That's not your preference. You know, whether it's somebody says, yes, I mean, hedge fund management. And we, we've got a lot of finances going on in our company. Oh, yeah, it's very big. And then, and then uh, the other person might say, mm, "Not my cup of tea. I'm not. I'm not excited by that. It doesn't float my boat. Doesn't rock my world. Doesn't float my boat. 
Not my cup of tea. I don't like that kind of thing. All right, okay. Moving on. Um, off the beaten track. Ah, that's a good one. That's a good one. Write that one down. Off the beaten track. Now, that's a phrase implying that maybe you found a really nice cafe or you found a really nice um, beach or, or, or a picnic spot or something really that you want to do, but it's hidden away. So tourists don't find it or, or other people, um, other, other members of the public haven't really seen it or spotted it because it's off the beaten track. Maybe it's uh, um, in, in the town centre and then you go down a little alleyway and then at, at the end of the alleyway, you turn left back on yourself and you have to go down these little steps. And in there, it's this beautiful cavernous cafe with uh, stuff hanging down and it's amazing and it's just very exciting and interesting. And it's really hidden. It's a hidden gem and it's off the beaten track. You wouldn't know it's there unless somebody told you about it. Yeah, so that's a good one to use. Quite, it's quite a lot of imagination and, and um, uh, creativity in, in, in your brain, in your thoughts, just describing that off the beaten track. Okay. <laughs> now, quite opposite to that now. Uh, almost, almost... Um, oh, I've forgotten the blending word now. All right, okay. Off, off the beaten track was um, put a sock in it. Now, this is almost quite the opposite and quite literal literally so put a sock in it actually means shut up shut up now i'm not listening to you just put a sock in it shut up be quiet stop talking so it's quite assertive and strong and i think that may have come from the old days when maybe um a young person was was arguing or shouting and maybe an adult put a sock in their mouth to stop um voice words sound coming out all right. Now, talking about mouths in the old days, um, my mum used to say to me, if I hear you swearing again, you know, using foul language, using in you know, profanities or um, exploit expletives, swear words, you know, if I hear you swearing again, I'm going to wash your mouth out with soap. Now, she meant that literally that if I was to swear again, to say something very offensive, she would she would take me to the bathroom and, and put soap in my mouth um, as, as like a punishment. So put a sock in it. I'm going to wash your mouth out with soap. Now I put my foot in it. So put your foot in it would imply you got your foot in your mouth because you said something you shouldn't have said. Oh, my God, I put my foot in it. It's Julie's birthday on Friday, but nobody's supposed to know. <gasps> I've put my foot in it. All right. Put your foot in your mouth. Put your money where your mouth is. You're giving it blah, 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 blah. I can do this. OK, put some money there then. Let's have a bet. Let's see if you can actually do that. Put your money where your mouth is. So that's like four, four idioms around mouth. Money where your mouth is. Put a sock in it. Going to wash your mouth out with soap. And then that other one, whatever it was. OK, moving on. Let's have a look. Um, scuppered. It did have a different word there, but I just put that one in because I preferred it. The other word was something I'd never heard of. Um, scuppered. Spoiled somebody's plan or chances. Now, this reminds me of this reminds me of Scooby Dooby Doo. Have you ever seen that? Scooby Dooby Doo. Where are you? We got some work to do now. Now, I know you are all typing away saying you're not going to make a singer, Paul. Put the microphone down. OK, so in, in, the, in Scooby Doo, they, uh, they always had a mystery to solve. And the bad guy at the end, when, when he was revealed who the bad guy was, he was. Oh, I would have got away with it, too, if it weren't for you blasted children or you blasted mystery team or whatever. They were called the mystery team. And uh, so the plan was scuppered. Scuppered. There is a couple other words as well that, that say the same thing. Now, if you want to be a bit more slang or a bit more crude, a bit more gritty and street, you could say, ah, now that's pissed on your fireworks. Again, very negative. Don't say that in front of children. But 
If somebody pisses on your fireworks, that means it's ruined your fireworks. They're not going to explode because they're all wet and damp and horrible. And obviously it's horrible urine. All right. Scuppered. Foiled. Been foiled. Foiled and scuppered. Plans have changed. Plans have been revealed. There, There is another one. Might come back to that. Okay. Rub salt in the wound. That's to make a situation worse. So, for example, if... Um, I don't know, you just got fired and then your wife comes home and says, oh, I'm leaving you because you're rubbish, you're terrible. She really rubs salt in the wound. Or, uh, yeah, or something like that. If you, um, I don't know, other things like that. Maybe you're going out on a date and your date doesn't turn up and then your date texts you to say, oh, and you're dumped or, or, or something like that. Two bad things often uh, happen in a row. It could could be deemed as rubbing salt in the wound. Or if somebody actually does something to you, like, oh, I just got mugged. And then when I got back to, to my car, there was a, a parking ticket on my car. It really rubs salt into the wound. Or it could be something verbal. Somebody might say something verbal to you like, um, well, you were rubbish at that job anyway. And it's good that you got fired because you're lazy and you're not very good at that job. All very negative, all very negative. Okay, okay, moving on. Um, rub salt in the wound. I don't actually use it very often. I don't use it very often. Okay, what about this one? Two peas in a pod. Or like two peas in a pod. Let's have a look at that one. So that would imply that two people are very, very similar in many ways. Ah, oh, you and I, we both enjoy photography. We're like two peas in a pod. <laughs> two peas in a pod. Very, very similar. Lots of similarities. Uh, and probably you will get on well. We'll probably get on well. Okay. Um, but I was going to go out today and, and do some photography. But now it's pouring down. It's raining cats and dogs. So if you don't mind, I'm going to take a rain check. I'm going to take a rain check. I, I don't I don't think I want to go. Take a rain check. We, we don't say that a huge amount in the UK. Um, up the creek without a paddle. That's that's a good one. That's a good one. Again, it visualizes that 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 you're you're trying to make your way th through life, or you're trying to make your way through something, uh, and you're having to work hard, and then you lose your paddle, like I don't know, like um, like running a marathon with no shoes. You know, it, it just becomes very difficult all of a sudden. Now, again, if you wanted to use slang, or you want to be a bit more gritty, a bit more street, you could say you're a shit's creek without a paddle. Uh, shit's Creek without a paddle I can say unfortunately a lot of English people are quite gritty and raw and well, especially in front of friends anyway and a little bit more um, a bit more casual with their language anyway up the creek without a paddle okay difficult situation with no solutions all right that next one I don't know um your neck of the woods. Your neck of the woods. Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember. I know that place. That's that's more your neck of the woods, isn't it? It's more your neck of the woods. That's where you live. That's more the area where you live. So if, if for example, I spoke to an American on the phone and they said about, um, I don't know, maybe they would say something about Tesla in, in Texas. And like, oh, yeah, Tesla. Yeah, that's more your neck of the woods, I would say. You know, more from where you're from, more more about an area that you would know and, and again it could be used in in different circumstances meaning different types of industry you know it doesn't have to be strictly geographical and location based you could say maybe your neighbor works with uh, cars he's a mechanic and you'd say something like um i don't know i was thinking about the tesla that i saw the other day on the motorway you know that's more your neck of the woods in regards to industry and understanding if you just have a conversation about it. Right, okay. What are we doing next? What have we got next? Um, a watch pot never boils. I don't think we say it that, that often or that direct. So pots and pans is where you, you would cook water on the stove. Uh, boil water on the stove, sorry. A pot and a pan. So a watched pot never boils. If you're looking at it and staring at it, it seems to take a lot longer. 
You know, if you're waiting for your food and you're staring at it through the door in the oven, the glass oven door, and you're, you're just thinking, oh, I'm so hungry, come on, come on. It takes a long time if you're watching it. That's the way it seems. A watch pot never boils. But again, you can use it in, in another context, in different industries. Okay, back to the drawing board. Oh, right, okay, so that was a big failure. Back to the drawing board, let's start again. Where did we go wrong? Back to the drawing board. Because obviously, back in the day, that was often where ideas, excuse me, where ideas would start, where people would, would um, think about how they can move a project forward, how they can move things. So the project would move forward, but if it got if it got abandoned or, or, or uh, cancelled, then you'd go back there, back to the board that you drew on and start your ideas all over again. Back to the drawing board. Okay. Uh, cry over spilt milk, word said that one. Don't put all your eggs into one basket. I like that, I like that. Don't put all your eggs into one basket. So as you'd imagine, that, that means don't put all your options into one um, solution into one fix. So, so for example, um, if you were looking at houses and you thought, right, well, I'm going to look at this house and I really, really like it. I really enjoy it. So I'm going to get the mortgage ready and I'm going to buy that house. And that's the house we're going to have. And that's definitely it. And so you, you kind of emotionally put all your eggs into one basket and then you get a phone call saying, sorry, it's sold to somebody else. You become very disappointed and, um, and upset. So again, same with work solutions. If you're applying for a job, you apply for multiple jobs. So you don't put all your eggs in one basket. You don't rely on one source. All right. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Okay. What have we got now? Mm, no, that's a good one. We like that. You should write that one down. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Every cloud has a silver lining, a silver lining. So if something negative or bad happens, then it's looking for the learning aspect of it, looking for the positive side of it, looking for the good thing that happened there. Uh, and that's often the case. Uh, what else we got? Oh, you're hitting the nail on the head. You really hit the nail on the head. Now, we say that quite a lot still. You hit the nail on the head. So that would imply that the person that was guessing or, or trying to work out what, what was talked about is exactly right. So I was thinking of selling this product for, say, I don't know, $30. Yes, you hit the nail on the head. That's exactly what we were thinking. That's exactly the same. Good, good. Hit the nail on the head. All right, okay. What else we got? Um, bandwagon. Jump on the bandwagon. <sighs> now, we say that because often people have been doing the same thing that's trending or that's doing well and that's got a, a bit of a growth. But often when people say this, the growth is on the decline. So let's just say... Um, Oh, I'm going to buy a diesel car because they're much better than petrol cars and you'll get more mileage and it'll last a long time. Somebody's jumped on the bandwagon, but they might be too late for the bandwagon. That bandwagon is gone. OK, so a bandwagon was was an actual wagon that, that moved along. I, I don't know whether it had a band on it or what it had on it. Um, but talking of wagons, there's one for the road. <laughs> That's when men delivering um, alcohol to each each pub or each inn would have a drink at each place, often given to them for free to help them on their long journey and their hard work as part of sustenance, as food, as, as um, energy for, for getting on to the next place. Okay, but bandwagon is often something that everybody else is already doing. Oh, you're going to get solar panels on your roof. Oh, everybody's already doing that. So you're jumping on the bandwagon, the same as everybody else. Um, now, that reminds me of another one, which would be, um, how does it go? Uh, the horse has bolted the stables. You know, you, you put the bolt on after the horse is bolted the stables. So the word bolt means to, to go quickly. 
uh, and like run really fast and gone. You know, so the horse has already gone out of the stable and then you put the lock on the gate after it's gone is silly. You're too late. You were slow. You're too late. So if you said, oh, yeah, I'm going to um, I'm going to get Wi-Fi and Internet in my house. Uh, I was going to get Wi-Fi and get a new phone and everything. Oh, that's a bit late now. It's already done. It's bolted. It's gone. Well, maybe not Wi-Fi is not gone. Exactly. That's that's not a great that's not a great metaphor. Uh, what would be a great metaphor? Well, yeah, like I said about buying a diesel car. It's a bit late now that, that that's gone. Now we're moving on to electric cars. So saying saying that you're going to buy a diesel car because it's more efficient and you get better fuel mileage is late. They've they've uh, bolted the gate after the horse has left. All right. Okay. Uh, the proof is in the pudding. Last one now. Last one. The proof is in the pudding. Now they they had it a little bit different before, but uh, so the proof is in the pudding is when somebody says, "Oh, this is great. This is really good. You'll love it. You'll love it. I guarantee it. I promise. It's brilliant. Yeah, you're gonna love this." Well, the proof is in the pudding. I'll tell you my evaluation. I'll tell you if it's good after I've tried it, because I don't trust your guarantees. You know, money back guarantee. Okay, but that still means that still means I gotta pay for it first, wait for it to arrive, and then use it. And then if I don't like it, then I gotta package it back up, do this, pay for the delivery, and, and send it back again. So even a hundred percent guarantee or money back guarantee doesn't necessarily mean um, I'm gonna enjoy it or like it or want even do it, want to do it. Okay, so the proof is in the pudding. It's whether or not I enjoy it, is whether or not it's any good. I'll be the judge, not you. I'll be the judge. So that's it. That's all I have for today. What was that? Like almost 60, 60 idioms. All right, if you're interested in idioms or you want me to be more specific in a particular genre of idioms, because there are sports, work, routine, that kind of thing. If you're interested in that, let me know below in the comments. To give, give me a shout out. And if you have a favorite British or, or um, American English idiom, let me know in the comments. I'd really want to know. It'd be interesting. All right, that's it for now. Take care. Have a great day. And uh, like I used to say before, if you're not having fun whilst learning, you're not learning. But that's just between.